disclaimer. These videos show some tips to help you on a true hike of the AT. The ideas presented are not the only way, merely one hiker's experience. Remember, hike your own hike. Oh, well, hello there, all, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to... Tips from the Trail. The trail. And in this series, basically what I want to cover is I want to cover little tips and tricks that I've learned on the uh, Appalachian Trail. Since being on the trail, I will say you learn more on this trail than you ever do at home. You just, you, you just can't do it. So I thought, well, if I can bring the stuff that I've learned from the trail while I'm actually on the Appalachian Trail, it would be probably the best knowledge I can bring. So, with that said, I wanna start this series, Tips from the Trail. Today, I wanna to talk about, well, rain. You know, I wanna talk about how you deal with being wet on the trail. And it was something that I definitely researched a lot of, and we were a little bit worried about it because basically, I don't care about being wet, but I don't wanna be cold. And when you get wet, you get cold. So, with that said, get out of here. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple different things when it comes to how to stay dry, or how to get wet and be okay with it, how to get dry, and overall how to just kind of deal with the rain. Because they say, and it's common, common thing to hear, that no pain, no rain, no main. So, you're gonna have to deal with this stuff. All right, first off is my first line of defense when it comes to the rain is this poncho. And I don't know if I'm showing it very well. I think it's Coleman brand poncho. Couple dollars, pretty thin, probably will rip pretty easy, but it's the first line of defense against the rain. And one nice thing about it is it, it'll cover not your whole pack, but it'll cover that seam between you and your pack with the hood. So it'll help water from draining down behind you and your pack cover. For a couple bucks, it's first line of defense. Um, and like I said, rain waterproof jacket. If you're out here in the rain, which we've been for a couple days, <laughs> everything is going to get wet. Yeah, whether it's waterproof or not. Okay, next, pack covers. Now, with your pack cover, uh, I guess there's only a couple things for me that I think of that are important with pack covers. One being that it fits your pack. Now, it isn't any good if you get a smaller pack cover than what your pack is, and you have to try to stretch it over everything, and it doesn't cover everything up. If you got a pack cover that's too small, and you're constantly trying to stretch it around your pack, you're, you're, you're risking uh, ripping or tearing, or if it's got a seam in it, uh, the last pack cover I had was a little small, had a seam in it, I started pulling the stitching out in the seam, and I could see through the stitching. If I could see through it, water can get through it, and your stuff is going to get wet. Woo, aha. All right, next. If you want to, I've heard of some people actually treating their pack itself with a waterproofing. I didn't do that, but it doesn't sound like a bad idea. It would be another line of defense. But what I do is, inside of my pack, and I'm gonna probably include some pictures somewhere in this video. Inside of my pack, I do a trash compactor bag liner. So I've got an inner liner, so the water's gotta get through the outer layer, my pack cover, and then it's gotta get through that inner liner. So it's third line of defense. Along with that inner liner, I also run some of my more important things in dry sacks. Now, I've got a, a Sea to Summit, sack for my um, sleeping bag, which I think is pretty good idea. That's one of your most important things to stay dry because that's what's gonna keep you warm at night. Big thing, don't mind getting wet, just don't like to be cold, and wet can make you cold. Um, other things, some electronics and stuff, um, I like to keep them in, in a waterproof. Ziploc bags work great. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about any other fancy ways of doing it. Um, Ziploc bags, they get a little hole in it. You could replace them if you're worried, put it in two bags. They're light, doesn't really matter. So Ziploc bags, 
for any of your other things that you want to keep waterproof inside your bag. But I will caution you to doing too many stuff sacks. When you get into too many stuff sacks, you're actually going to lose um, room in your pack. You can't pack your bag full of as many things when they're in stuff sacks as you can loose, which I would like to do a video on packing your pack because I've learned a lot about that. Everything I started out doing on this trip, I do differently now pretty much since I've been out here. Another option, keeping things dry or as dry as you can, is when it is raining, shelter hop. You know, plan your days around getting back to a shelter. That'll be one way that gives you, you know, potential maybe drying things and uh, not getting your tent, your hammock, whatever you stay in, and sleeping out in the rain. So watch the weather. So you watch the weather, you camp in the shelters when it's raining, it'll help a little bit, but unless you don't hike in the rain, you're still gonna get wet. So now that I've covered what I do to keep the things that I do not want to get wet from getting wet, I'm gonna go over the things that you are not going to keep dry. They are going to get wet. There is a list of things that are going to get wet. Let them be wet and just deal with them being wet. First one, shoes. Your shoes are gonna get wet. One thing that you can do is you can keep them warm. Um, if it's gonna be too cold and we've gotten wet, we will put our shoes in our trash compactor bag that we have in our pack, wrap them up, get out of my boot stick, and put them inside of our sleeping bags. That way, in the morning, they'll be warm, but they will be still wet. Um, along with socks and a lot of your clothing, your hiking pants, your rain jacket, these things, you can hang them at night, but for the most part, they're gonna kind of stay damp. Your best bet is to just be okay with that. That's some of the stuff that's gonna get wet. As for your hiking clothes, you could have rain pants or rain, I mean, I've got a rain jacket, I don't have rain pants, but I think over time, you're still gonna soak through. Um, in the colder weather, uh, like we get some rain and sleet and stuff, it might be a good idea to try to keep your hiking clothes drier for longer but all in all I think no matter what whatever you're hiking in you're better off just getting something that dries fast and hiking in it wet the main thing to remember is that it doesn't matter if you're hiking in wet stuff as long as it's not too cold and your body keeps moving and keeps you warm doesn't matter how wet your hiking clothes get is that you have dry clothes to put on when you get to camp now that's what's gonna stay hidden away underneath your multiple layers of protection because when you get to camp, you gotta need a way to dry out so you can stay warm. So now that we've covered the things that are gonna, just gonna get wet, and then the things that we wanna keep dry, we can talk about the things that get wet and how we can dry them out. Now, a lot of these ideas are just things I've heard and I don't know for sure, but I've heard that uh, you wear them to bed, wear them in your sleeping bag. And because your down or synthetic bag uh, does breathe, that you wear them in your bag and as your body heat heats up, the moisture gets wicked away um, out of the clothing. This would be like your base layers, um, your socks, uh, stuff like that and the moisture is not trapped in the bag, it comes out. I've heard it, and I've seen people do it, but I just don't know if I'd risk getting my sleeping bag wet with that moisture. So, that's one way that people try to dry things out. One trick we've heard on the trail is uh, to dry your socks, uh, boil water, pour it into a Nalgene, and then wrap your socks around a Nalgene bottle and the boiling water will heat the socks up and kind of steam the moisture out of them. Another way, campfire. Obviously campfire is a great idea, but two things that go together is things getting wet and rain. And if it's raining, 
you ain't starting a fire. Well, maybe you can. Um, and if you can, great. Use it to dry your clothes. Great idea. Oh, hang things from your pack. If you can take on a nice breezy day in between raining and hang some stuff from your pack, it's gonna dry out a little bit. Um, and right along with while you're hiking, wearing things can dry them out a little bit. But that list of things is almost easier than worrying about drying them out. It's just to hike with them while they're wet. Hiking in the rain really isn't that bad. Not as bad as you think it might be. It's uncomfortable at first. Another neat trick to drying some things out, if you're not worried about adding just a little bit of weight, is uh, to carry some uh, pages of a newspaper with you in a big plastic, like a gallon sized bag. Now, at nighttime, you can pull off your socks that are drenched, put the newspaper and the socks in the bag. The newspaper will help pull the moisture away from the socks. Um, along with your boots, a little bit of newspaper and a boot will pull the moisture out of the, the boot. But if it's really wet, there ain't no help for it anyways. Another trick, your boots are always gonna be wet and they're not very easy to dry out, but you can pull the soles out of your boots, which will help them dry faster. And you can bring the soles into your sleeping bag and help dry those out as well. So by bringing your soles out of your boots, putting newspaper in your boots, and then bringing your soles into your sleeping bag with you, you might wake up with less wet boots. But they're still gonna be wet. Along the lines of boots, if you've got wet boots, but dry socks, uh, one option is to use uh, like a Walmart bag or a grocery bag. Um, put your dry sock foot into the bag and then slide that into your boot. That'll keep your foot from getting wet, at least for a while. I haven't tried it, but I heard Subway bags are the best ones because they're better shaped towards your foot. So there you have that. Now the best way and about the only way to get your stuff truly dry is a hostel laundromat. You know, your stuff's gonna get wet while you're hiking. Plan yourself a day to stop in or resupply. You know, get a good guidebook and know where you're going so you can get to a, a place that's got a laundry service and then dry your stuff. Hiking it wet while it's raining for two, three, four days and then go and dry it. And then while it's not wet, you're not wet. Rain is not the only thing that'll make you wet on the Appalachian Trail. One common mistake that hikers make, at least that we made at the beginning, was you hike with too many clothes on and you sweat. Sweat will get you just as wet as any little drizzle will. And it can be prevented by just wearing the right amount of hiking clothes. What I like to do is actually start hiking cold. And then I give it what I call the half mile challenge. I start hiking cold and if I don't warm up within a half a mile, then I'll put more clothes on. But other than that, it'll keep you hiking cold, which will keep you from sweating and help keep you dry. Well, there you have it. That's what I know about dealing with rain on the Appalachian Trail. I hope this video has been helpful and stay tuned for more tips from the trail because if it's working for me, it may work for you. Bye bye. Exactly. Until we meet. Oh, he was going to pull away though. Trails to you. Smiling until then. We can walk. I am happy trails to you. Here's a famous expression for Lisa and Daryl. Happy trail. Lisa and Daryl.